So this is an iPhone XR that doesn't turn on. That's because there's a short on the motherboard. And what that means is, well, you're going to have to watch the video to find out because I'm going to teach you what does that mean, how to find the short, how to diagnose it, and how to fix it. I'll also show you all the different tools I use for this repair. So make sure you stick around and you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out the links down below in the description because I have a cool shirt like this one that says I fix phones all day, every day. Yeah, I'm Jesse from VCC Board Repairs. Thanks a lot for joining us here on the channel and let's go ahead and get started with the video. All right, so one of the first things you wanna do is plug in the device to a USB charger and check what is the USB charging current. Um, on this one, I was getting 0.431 USB charging, but it would not turn on. So the next step is to plug in your DC power supply I use the DT880, it is a mini DC power supply. It's virtually the same thing, except it only outputs four volts and has special plugs for iPhone specifically. So this one is an iPhone 10 plug that I've modified and basically cut off the extra piece. That way I could plug it into the 10R specifically. I do have an extra one for the actual 10. So this is what it originally looked like, and this is the new one. So. As you may know, iPhone 10 X and 10R use the same battery connector. So that's why we can use this. So if you're using the same iPhone 10 plug, make sure you plug it in in this direction. And now we can provide voltage to the battery connector. This is essentially simulating what a battery does. We're providing voltage and we right away see there's current draw before prompt to boot. This is not a normal behavior. A working device should show four volts and zero amps. We have 800 or so milliamps being pulled uh, from the DC power supply. So what does that mean? The current is power that's flowing through the motherboard. This has not been told to turn on, so it should not be consuming any power. This shows that there's power being consumed. So most likely there is a shorted capacitor here that is drawing this current. So our next step is to figure out where is that coming from? One of the cool things is that a shorted component generates heat because there's power flowing through the motherboard and that uh, causes heat to be generated. And when it's a capacitor that's shorted, that's one shorted capacitor is what heats up because that's where all the power is flowing through. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so this is my new thermal camera stand, but I'll make a whole separate video on that. For now, we have the motherboard under the thermal camera. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna try to make that shorted component heat up so we could find it. So right now, uh, I'm gonna push power, and you'll see all the power flowing through the DT880 to the battery connector is causing the cable to heat up. This is normal. So this is not the cause, this is just showing you there's a lot of power flowing through here. And if we go through the motherboard, if we're lucky, it'll be outside of a shield. If not, we have to start taking off shields to find it. And if you see right here, there's one component that is lighting up. It is right here. So that means uh, most likely that's a shorted capacitor. And the way to think of it is, you know, the DT880 is like the main shutoff valve for your water line at your house. And if, if you have a leak in your house, you don't know where that leak is coming from, right? There's like pipes everywhere. And there's like one spot where the water is leaking. So think of this number, the amps, like the, the amount of water that's flowing out of that leak in your house. So when I push power, I basically turn on the main uh, shutoff valve for the house. So now all the water is flowing through the house plumbing. And there's one spot where all that, uh, this much water is flowing out. And that happens to be right here. When we're dealing with uh, electronics, instead of water leaking out, we get heat being generated. And, and what's like literally happening is all this current is leaking to ground when it shouldn't. So let's go ahead and do uh, an inspection of this area of the board. 
All right, so we know the heat's coming from here. So let me go ahead and remove this foam so we can get a better view. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find the potential shorted component. The way you do that is you get your multimeter, you put it in diode mode. It is a little triangle, pointing, a little arrow triangle pointing to the right with the line. Uh, check your user manual for specific on your multimeter. I use a Fluke 115 and that's what it looks like. And what you do is you put your red probe on ground. Ground is anything metal basically. Uh, so like a screw post here. Your black probe is the one you probe with. So if you'll see, it was somewhere around here, most likely one of these two. So what I like to do is, it's currently underfilled, but that's fine. I'm gonna kind of poke through it. So I'm probing this end and it gives me zero, zero, zero. That means uh, I have continuity from ground, which is this post to this side of this cap most likely a cap and now i'm gonna check the other side all right short and short so this is most likely our culprit let me check this one just to be sure same thing kind of clear off this underfill stuff and in comparison you can see this one gives me a reading of 0.297 on this side uh, ground is actually normal so the capacitor has one leg on a line and the other leg in parallel on ground and a good capacitor does not have continuity across it so that means the left side and the right side are, are not physically connected internally when you're talking about uh, this kind of uh, DC electronics so next step is let's go to ZXW ZXW is a software that, that essentially lays out the motherboard on how everything is interconnected. And what's cool is you can click on a component and it tells you what else is also connected on the line. So in this case, uh, we're here on the same part of the motherboard, right? So the battery connectors here, and this is a component we're probing. And this specific line it's called pp vdd boost this one is super common to short out and is a main power line meaning if you have a short where like i showed you earlier you get current draw before prompt to boot it's either going to be this line vdd boost vdd main or sometimes uh, one of these like speaker amp there's very few lines that will short to ground that will give you current draw before prompt to boot and this happens to be one of them so as you can see here one side is on on vdd boost the other side is on ground like i mentioned capacitor does not have continuity from left side to right side it's like if it's internally disconnected what happens is when a capacitor fails it internally shorts so it essentially becomes like a wire so now that line is now touching ground and electricity wants to flow to ground. So as soon as it touches ground, all that electricity is gonna flow through ground because that's the path of least resistance. You could just like Google this kind of stuff, like how electricity likes to flow to ground. And in this case, this capacitor has failed and it, sh it, it is pulling all the power to ground when it shouldn't. Now, another thing to be aware of is during our testing or troubleshooting what i was doing is injecting voltage at the battery connector essentially i was providing voltage here and the short was showing up somewhere else so this line is called a uh, bat bcc and that is basically the main connection to the battery and it you know it's a whole different line than vdd boost which is over here So if you're wondering, how does BatVCC connect to uh, VDD Boost? Well, let me show you real quick. Uh, so this is something to be aware of is because sometimes you'll get a, 
essentially you'll get uh, trolled thinking the short is somewhere else. So let me show you how everything kind of connects to each other so you get an idea. So you're, you're essentially providing voltage here and there's something pulling current. So it goes from here, from the battery connector to this chip back here, which is called Yancy. So you see here, Pat, uh, BAT VCC, uh, internally through this chip, it connects to this line called uh, VDD main Yahtzee. And from here, it connects to here through this resistor, which is essentially a, uh, like a fuse or a wire. So it travels through the battery connector, through this chip, through this resistor, and now we're at VDD main. VDD main then connects to VDD boost through its own chip. The so VDD boost has a chip as well here that connects to here, and this is what's connected to here. So this um, is the root cause of this short. So this is touching ground. So this is where your leak is. So think of it like the plumbing scenario again. So think of like your main water line from, you know, from the outside has to go through all these different paths to get to your master bathroom leak. So that's kind of think of it that way is that these are all like little bridges um, of different lines where you essentially get to that line. So this cap is shorted, so it's pulling current through here, through here, through the back of the board, through this resistor, to this line, which essentially is the battery connector. So it has to, it goes through all these spots. And what will happen is if I were to uh, take off the back shield of the board, you'll see heat being generated right here. And that's because it's essentially a kind of like a uh, bottleneck and that generates heat also on the boost uh, chip, which is over here on the top. It will also generate heat because it's just flowing uh, like a lot of current just flowing from here to here and it will generate heat. But really you need to be able to find the actual shorted component. And the thing is you cannot just probe, you know, uh, like let's say, let's use this for example, if I probe here, let me show you. So there's, so all these things in red are the exact same line. So you can probe here, 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 anything in red, and it's all going to show as shorted. That's because it is all connected in parallel. So if I were to probe here, that will read as short. Also the component over here, that was in red on ZXW. It's also reading as short, but that doesn't mean they're both shorted. It just means they're all connected to the same line. So you can't probe to find the shorted line. You have to inject voltage to make that short to be apparent. Essentially kind of like the same plumbing scenario. Think of it like you're trying, you need to force water through the plumbing to see where the, where the water leaks. Kind of that same scenario in that, except with plumbing, uh, I don't think you can probe for leaks. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So now uh, next step is I'm going to show you uh, how to inject voltage directly to this line in case you don't want to inject uh, using the DT880. All right, so now we're going to inject voltage using multimeter probes. So what I've done here is uh, this, these are just regular multimeter probes and I've cut off the, usually there's like a little jacket over these. I've cut that off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into my DC power supply, but instead of plugging in directly to it, I have some extension cables here. That way it's a little more convenient. So red to red, black to black. And here on the top, you'll see uh, these cables that are part of my extension cables. And you best believe I have this linked in the description. So if you want to get this, check it out down below. All right, so now 
I have my DC power supply set to 4.3 volts and 2 amps. That means is I will be applying 4.3 volts and the max current that can be pulled or drawn is 2 amps. Uh, you know, this is so you can limit how much current is drawn. In some scenarios, you don't want to draw, allow too much current to be, you know, flow through it. You, you, could, you want to sometimes limit it. it, just depends on what you're doing. In this scenario, this is my default settings for VCC main short, BDD main short, BDD boost short. How much voltage to inject? Most lines will tell you how much voltage the line is. If you're not sure, just do like one volt. For this specific line, I know 4.3 volts is safe and two amps is safe. So let's just go with that. If you have any questions about a certain line, how much to inject voltage, ask in my Facebook group. I'll have that link down below in the description. I have it set, but we have on this specific model, uh, you have to enable the output. So right here is an on and off switch. Push on. That means now we have zero amps being drawn. If I uh, short these together, you'll see now 1.9 amps, basically two amps. All right, so now that we're ready to inject voltage, uh, let's see where to actually inject it. So for example, in this case, let's pretend we don't know where the short is. We know this line is shorted, but we don't know which component is the culprit. So in this case, we have multiple places to inject. Uh, all this stuff on this side is under a shield. Let's go ahead and not take it off. Let's see if we could find it on the exposed part of the board. So right now we have two spots. So we have this cap and this cap that we can inject voltage to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inject voltage to here. What that means is I'll put my red probe here that will provide the 4.3 volts and we'll see if this component lights up. If it doesn't, then most likely the short is somewhere else or it could be I'm injecting into the shorted component because this will light up. You know, where you put your probe is where it's gonna light up as well because all the power is flowing through just like you saw the battery connector. So let's go ahead and do that now. I have my black and red probes. The black is going to the shield and the red I'm going to touch the, the side of the cap like that and you can see right away that cap lights up. So it, the, the probe on the right is injecting voltage and it's all flowing to that cap. So that is definitely where the leak or the short is located. Okay, so now the most important part. How do you actually fix this? There's a shorted cap. So what do you do? Now, most people would think, oh, it's bad, let's go ahead and replace it. But this is a VDD boost cap. There's like a hundred of them on the board. I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit. It's probably like 10 or 15. So capacitors are connected in parallel. That means they're like side by side, although not physically, um, electrically, they are connected in parallel. And if you do a little research about you know series and parallel components you'll find out uh, especially with with these capacitors you could actually remove one cap and the circuit will be fine so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna re remove that shorted cap and then we'll check again to see if that short is gone so here we are and one thing you'll notice is there's no visual signs of this capacitor being shorted Sometimes you get lucky and they're like physically burnt, but in this case it's not. So what I like to do is, uh, well we already confirmed, this cap here on the top side is the bad cap because we injected voltage, that was heating up. Whether we injected directly to it or to the battery connector, this was lining up. So let's go ahead and remove it. So one of the things I like to do is clear out the underfill around it. So I'm using uh, X-Acto blade here very gently to kind of just poke away this underfill. And then this connector has pretty stable, so I'm gonna kind of press up against it and then twist my blade. Hopefully it just breaks off. Yeah, see how that kind of came up? And push it for a little bit from the other side and we got it off. So if you look at my finger and compare the size of the capacitor is tiny. 
this small capacitor can literally kill the whole board. Now, a fundamental thing to understand is capacitors should not have continuity across it. So what I'm gonna do right now is in diode mode, I touch both sides. You'll see you have zero, zero, zero. This should be OL, should be like this, open line. But it reads as there's continuity across it. I touch it properly. But yeah, definitely bad. Now, actually if we go back over here, you'll see if I diode mode. So, so when you're diode mode, you put red probe on ground. And then black probe is where you probe. You'll see I'm back to a normal reading, which is 372. This one as well, 299. So before it was getting zeros on both sides, like this, but no longer. So it's fixed. Let's go ahead and test it out. All right, so now we have device fully assembled with no screws. And then I'm gonna plug it into charge. And then on the upper left screen, we have my PowerZ USB meter. And actually you can see there's a low battery symbol. So that means the device is now working. You can see that USB charging is 1.93 amps. And that is a very good charging current for this model. Now the battery is dead. So that also makes it pull the most amount of charging current via USB, but if we give it enough time, this device will turn on. As you can see, there's a low battery symbol. So while we wait for this to charge up, let's hear a word from our sponsor. That is merch.vccboardrepairs.com. This is my merch store. I have a few different t-shirt designs. Uh, like this is the one I'm wearing today. I fix phones all day, every day. I have a coffee mug. I uh, have a new shirt here, Keep Calm and Fix Phones. So really appreciate all you guys who bought shirts so far. If you haven't, make sure you do so. And if you do, click right here to access my Instagram and tag me if you do uh, get a shirt. That would be awesome. So go ahead and get back to the device. Oh, look at that. It's actually turning on now. So phone is turned on and working. And see touch is working so we have fully fixed a short on the motherboard we didn't have to replace the capacitor because it's not needed i believe it's called a filtering capacitor and it's connected in parallel it has one leg on ground so you have a capacitor with one leg on ground really high chance you don't need to replace it especially if it's vdd boost vdd main speaker amp i think that's pretty much it or you get current draw before prompt to boot. So really appreciate all you guys who made it to the end so far. If you made it here to the end, make sure you let me know down below in the comments. That would be awesome to hear. Also um, appreciate all the likes and subscribes so far. The channel is growing pretty fast. That's awesome. Let me know if you have any questions about any of this that I covered. Did it make sense? Is there anything you need me to explain further? Any other type of videos you want me to make of any other repairs, let me know in the comments or in the Facebook group, link down below. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me today. I'll see you guys in the next one.